racing once again with three and three quarter minutes to go. Running out wide. The Porsche there slips off the road, and that is Mathieu Jaminet letting Katzberg go through. So Jaminet losing out. Katzberg then gains one place, does he, as he comes up towards the line. Through they go. I think he might have given it back, actually, because in theory, overtaking behind uh, uh, before the safety car line not permitted. Change for the lead as De Filippi goes through them. So he makes his move and he's gone by. Has he Connor De Filippi up front? Jeffrey Schmidt down to second. What's going on for third? Renauer is on his toes to try to find a way ahead of Spengler as they turn their way down towards Hugenholt in these atrocious conditions that have got probably as bad now as they were at the start of the race. The two land Audis then, first and second. Conor De Filippi leading the way. Jeffrey Schmidt down to second, and De Filippi set to push clear, I would have thought now. Germane keeping Katzberg at bay, but now the BMW goes to the inside line, going down towards Kreiflach. Does he go through? He's still alongside on the inside. Wait to see what comes out of the corner. They remain side by side. This is brave stuff by Katzberg. He's going to go through on the inside line, is he? Jaminet stands his ground on the outside, and Katzberg still can't make the move stick. He's got the inside line here for nine. Outside for turn 10, through the gloom, which are the headlights ahead, they're the Porsches. So Nick Katzberg threw everything at it. He's almost in the back of the 911 as he tries to elbow his way through and he spins. Round goes the BM and a big hit indeed as into him goes Sven Barth. The Corvette head on into the BMW. And Nick Katzberg limps on with the bodywork falling off the car. It's going to be a safety car. It could even be a red flag, this, because there won't be time, I wouldn't have thought, to get the two cars moved and go racing again. And so, let's see what happens next. You've got two cars stranded, the safety car is deployed, but that, I fear, will take you to the end of the race. Nick Katzberg tried to get past the Porsche. He lost it. He was hit absolutely head-on by the Corvette. This is how he saw it. So he lost out on the outside line. He went to the inside, tried to prise open the door. There was a nudge. Loses traction, round he goes and wait for the Corvette. Bang. Big hit. It puts the BMW back in the right direction, but it goes effectively no further from the outside. There it is, the BMW spins and Sven Bart plows into him. And Katzberg lucky not to get hit by Jules Gounon, who was going through. Now, there are some teams that desperately need this race to at least complete one more lap for their newly gained position to stand, rather than it to be a red flag. But the safety car has been deployed, so that is our fourth safety car period of the race. I was a bit previous when I said our final one a little while ago. So there it is from the outside. Round goes Katzberg. And that, I'm afraid, that blow you see from the Corvette is not just a blow to the BMW, but also to Philip Eng's championship hopes, because rather than banking points, it is a retirement. So was Katzberg wrong to keep trying? Should he have banked the points? Well, it's academic now. He's out of the race, Eng does not score, and Nick Katzberg, rare that he blocked his copybook, but that's a certain amount of ink upon it. And the LAN team watching that and seeing the impact as the head-on comes from the Corvette, Wolfgang Land, former racer himself, appreciates what both drivers have gone through. And a real shame for Sven Bart because that Corvette was running nice and strongly in seventh place, but now gets no result at all. It's rare, in fairness, that the car is that far up the order, but just unlucky. Wrong place, wrong time. Comes out of uh, turn 10 and went the wrong way, effectively. So through the incident zone, they come. We've hit zero, but there's no way, I don't think, we're going to get the race... Uh, back underway, it'll be finishing behind the safety car, won't it now? So the order we have is the order that will stand. Conor de Filippi and Christopher Meese are going to win and give us, depending on which way you look at this, either uh, an eighth or a seven and a half different winning combination because uh, we've got, of course, Jules Gounon having been with two different co-drivers as a winner this year. Uh, but as you get a replay here of the move for the lead up the inside with limited resistance by Jeffrey Schmidt, goes Conor de Filippi, goes through, takes the race lead. And it was a crucial move, of course, because by the end of the lap, the safety car was back out. But in terms of winning combinations, uh, this will give us a record eight for the year. Not uh, withstanding the fact that Jules Gounon has been in two of those winning combinations, as I say, is the only multiple victor this year. So, the safety car brings them onto the last lap. 
and we have effectively a result now because the clock has hit zero. There's the regulation lap at the end, and it will be a win for Conor de Filippi and Christopher Meese from Jeffrey Schmidt and uh, Christopher Hasser in second, and third will go the way, the best result of the season for Florian Spengler and Christopher Zanella. Florian Spengler, the former Porsche and Polo racer, Christopher Zanella, who we saw in Formula Renault 2 litre and 3.5. Fourth from way, way back on the grid. It's going to go the way of Sven Muller and Robert Renard. Fifth, Mathieu Jaminet and Michael Ammermuller. So not only did they not lose the place to Nick Katzberg, uh, but they survived all the attacks. Up into sixth then, Geipel and Frey up to seventh after the speeding infringement in the pit lane. Jules Gounon, good recovery with Renga van der Zander. Eighth is going to be Dennis Marshall and Patrick Niederhauser. Ninth, Mike Ortman and Frank Stippler. And tenth from the pit lane, it is going to be uh, the class battler, Alex McDowell Porsche. This is the view on board with Conor de Filippi as the team starts to celebrate because they know that nothing can change now. Whilst we're behind the safety car like this, they get ready uh, for the cars to come over the line and we'll see how that affects the championship and affects different drivers' hopes in due course. There's a hugely frustrated Sven Bart out of the car. He's been a regular in this ADAC GT Masters for many, many seasons. The safety car will peel in this time, but only really so that you have the... Uh, ceremonial finish, the chequered flag to be waved without the safety car spoiling the shots. And Nick Katzberg has a wander over to say, I'm oh, sorry, I couldn't really see very much and accepting his part in the accident, but it's done quite a bit of damage to the Corvette, a lot of damage to the front of the BMW. So, as I said at the time, it's unusual that Nick Katzberg does make mistakes. That was one, but in the conditions and with his eagerness to try and gain places for Philip Eng, and he had the pace in the car anyway. Maybe you can't argue that he should have had a go, but in hindsight, well, it's a damaged car, it's a non-finish, it's no points for Philip Eng. And so, the eighth round of the ADAC GT Masters is going to end as the safety car peels for the pits. The drivers will make their way up towards the chequered flag, and what a race it has been. Lots of drama all the way through. Where in the end of all of that did Luca Stoltz and Luca Ludwig get to 11th, not quite breaking into the points? But as Conor de Filippi then brings the car through, Christopher Meese and Conor de Filippi will win the second race of the weekend in the ADAC GT Masters. It is a land 1 2 as they make their way up towards the timing line. So, number one, Audi scores the win. Second goes the way of the number two sister car, Jeffrey Schmidt, brings it home. Christopher Hasser having done the hard yards at the start. And then third, Florian Spengler and Christopher Zanella. Christopher Meese, a happy man, a race winner. And Conor de Filippi, the American, who first came to prominence really in European racing when he came to the Formula Ford Festival. And then the Walter Hayes Trophy as part of Jeremy Shaw's uh, USA scholarship effort in FF 1600 racing. Uh, but then came back into Europe to race in Carrera Cup Germany and did a very strong job, but then moved to GT racing. And the reigning champion, coming home as a race winner, adding to what's been a good season with a win in the Nürburgring 24 hours. Delight for Florian Spengler and Christopher Zanella then taking third, the best result of the season for those two, and the best result for HB Racing as well, the team that operates the Lamborghini. Christopher Hasser, Audi factory driver, settling for his second spot.